Hi, I'm Ilka. I'm the media manager at the Alcohol and Drug Foundation. Today I'm sitting with Jill Stark, a journalist with nearly 20 years experience. She's exactly the right person we want sitting in this chair because we're going to be talking about how you can, as a local drug action team, harness the media to communicate the importance of working in the alcohol and drug field and how we can actually cause change in the community. So we're going to start off with just some really basic information. Um, and I think Jill has the first question. So one of the questions I'm often asked as a journalist and media trainer is, what advice would you give someone who is nervous about pro approaching the media? Mm, I remember when I first did my first ever TV interview, I was so nervous. When I went into those interviews, I just made myself vulnerable to the interviewer or the journalist and said, look, this is my first time, I'm feeling really nervous, please be kind to me. Um, and then it kind of takes the heat out of um, uh, how you're feeling, it takes the pressure off and everybody knows it's, you don't have to be an expert in the first go. Um, I think it's really important to remember that they're, they're humans, um, just like us. And remember you're the one that actually holds the information, they're calling you or you're calling them to give them the information. So be confident in uh, what you know and uh, yeah, don't be afraid, they're just human like us. I think, you know, Jill, you're not big and scary. No, not always anyway, but yeah, I think most of us are pretty good people. We're not out there to make you look silly. We just want to get the best story. You'll hear and see different media outlets take different positions on key issues. Why is that? Every media outlet is different. So you'll look at somewhere like the ABC or Fairfax and they're going to be taking a bit more of a progressive view on things. Whereas um, News Corp papers, so the Australian, the Telegraph, the Herald Sun, they might be a, a bit more populist, a bit more conservative. So I think it's just really important to bear that in mind. Know your audience, know who it is you're talking to, know what their agenda might be on certain issues. It's really important that you do your homework first, so have a listen to the local radio stations that are in your town, have a read of all the newspapers, watch the, the TV news, watch the different channels, and by then you should be able to get a pretty good understanding of the positions that those particular media outlets take. And then you also get um, a great insight as to which one you will go to depending on what story you have. It's just thinking about how you can creatively pitch it to them in a way that might suit their audience. So um, I've worked in regional, rural and metro media and they are quite different beasts I can say. Now for you Ilka, um, how has that worked when you're pitching into those outlets? In my experience it's been really, really different. So if I'm pitching into metropolitan or even suburban media, I know that they're extremely time poor. So I will literally spoon feed the story to a metropolitan journalist. So here's the story, here's the talent, here's the photo, like here's your photo opportunity, here's your take it or leave it, you know, it's all in one pitch. I don't, you know, meander and, you know, take my time. It's short, hard and fast. But when I go to more regional and rural areas, appreciation for more grassroots community stories is greater than the metropolitan newspapers or, or TV outlets. So I will take my time, not a whole bunch, but a little bit more time, so the most important thing to remember when dealing with regional press is they are absolutely focused on that local angle. So finding someone in the local community for talent is really important. They really want to get that sense of, of um, localness. Um, I remember once the famous headline on the Aberdeen Press and Journal newspaper back in the day when the Titanic um, sank. This the headline, is Scotland, this, is, this is in Scotland, <laughs> but the, the, the headline was Aberdeen Man Lost at Sea um, when the Titanic sank. So yeah, the people are, are really trying to find that local angle even out of a huge national story, so that's important to remember. Mm. Something else to, to be mindful of is that uh, metropolitan news outlets have a daily deadline, whereas when you start moving out to regional and rural areas, you know, and you, you'll see it yourself, is that they'll go to print once a week, um, sometimes twice a week. So just you know, making sure that you're always asking, when's your deadline, is one of the first questions. Um, so you can make sure you get everything they need by the time they need it because leaving them with dead air or an empty space in their newspaper is not good for building a good relationship with a journalist. So Jill, what would you say to somebody who, if you recognise a newspaper or a media outlet takes a particular position which is not in your best interest, 
do you can them completely from approaching them with media stories or do you try to keep working with them? My position would be to never ignore any media outlet, to never um, blanket ban a media outlet. I know from experience through working in um, PR that if you actually ban a media outlet, you might end up making them a bit of an enemy and then they go after your cause in a way that you might not like. That's so true and I think, um, you know, for me as a, a media manager and a PR operator, um, sometimes newspapers, radios, TV outlets will take a particular position that's not based on fact mm. or evidence. So I have made phone calls to those outlets after I've seen the story go to air or be printed to correct them on their story. A lot of the times they don't take it too nicely. <laughs> no, they don't. Is, it, is that something you would encourage um, um, local drug action teams to do? Um, does it work in their favour or does it actually work against them? I, I don't think any journalist likes being told how to do their job, to be honest. Of course it's incredibly frustrating when you see uh, something go to air or be published that's actually not factually correct. But I do I think that sometimes drawing more attention to that mistake can be um, more of a problem than just having a discussion with the journalist individually. Yeah. So like the approach that I've taken has been um, pick your battles. Mm. So if it's something small that they've got wrong but you want to still keep them on side, let it go. If it's something significant, then I'll absolutely call and, um, and have that corrected because at the end of the day it's really important that we use the media as an effective tool to communicate the right facts and the right pieces of information to the community. But again, it's about picking your battles. Mm.